Hi, I'm Hawken with Top Don, and today we're going to do a video on programming a control module on a 2011 Volkswagen Passat CC. So, the tools we're going to use in this video are going to be the Top Don Professional Series Phoenix Smart and the Top Don Tornado T90000. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to show you a few things here. Now you're going to ask yourself a few questions. What makes the T90000 uh, different from a conventional charger for batteries, right? So a programming specific charger or power supply charger is used to hold the voltage on the vehicle steady constantly. Other style chargers, conventional battery chargers, will alter that voltage to try and optimize the charging strategy for the battery, right? Uh, that's a little bit different strategy from what we want when we're going to do a programming event. Uh, when we're doing a programming event, we want the voltage to be very stable, and that stable voltage ensures that we don't have corrupted data blocks in a control unit, uh, that we don't lose communication with a control unit, things of that nature. So it's very important that we use a programming-related charger or specific charger, uh, also known as a power supply style charger. So the Top Don Tornado T90000 is the most suited product to do this task uh, from the product portfolio that Top Don offers. So that's what we're going to use today. Now the tool is also designed to compensate for temperature variation. Uh, when we were doing the programming on this particular vehicle, it was actually about 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Uh, and as you can see, the T90000 is well suited to this as it can perform all the way down to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, obviously, optimum conditions for the T90000 would be indoor climate, you know, somewhere between 50 and 75 degrees, but it is capable of performing at the farther extremes of the temperature range, negative 4 all the way up to 104 degrees. So just keep that in mind for future reference when you're using your T90000. Here is the vehicle that we are programming today. So that is going to be a 2011 Volkswagen Passat CC. So this vehicle, uh, they called us out and said they would like to have the ECM reprogrammed. Uh, there was something in the ECM, a code that they were concerned about that they wanted us to try reprogramming to see if it would fix the concern. And we're going to take you through the process. Now, just to keep in mind, there are some aspects of the video that we do speed up for time purposes. Uh, to make this a bit more efficient so that you don't have to watch the long drawn out process of programming. It's important to remember that when we're doing a programming event, it can take a decent amount of time. Uh, some vehicles, it can take multiple hours to program a module. Uh, other vehicles, it may only take 15 minutes or so. But you do need to have that steady voltage supply by the T90000 throughout the entire event to ensure that your event is successful. Now the other thing you want to make sure that you're doing is having a stable internet connection to your tool uh, when you're going to use the tool for programming and also that your battery for the tool is charged up sufficiently so that your tool does not go dead during the programming procedure. So uh, we're going to go ahead here. This is our setup. So we've got the Phoenix Smart here uh, set up on the steering wheel and we've got our ribbon cable on the left going down to the data link connector and uh, got the USB plugged in actually uh, just for a moment here uh, actually unplugged it after this did not need the USB cable for this procedure so disregard the USB cable for this purpose so first thing I like to do is go into the vehicle set it up and perform a full system scan before I do anything. I also like to go into the specific module that I'm going to be programming, and I like to capture all of the information about the module, take a screenshot of this, so that I have this information if I need it later down the road. So I will go in through auto scan or through manual scan, build the vehicle, talk to the vehicle, get to our topology screen, and then I'm going to go ahead and collect all of the information from the module that I can capture. So part number, coding information, you can see we've got our long coding information here. Uh, we've also got the VIN number, which is written into the module. There's also some advanced module identification we're going to show you here with the scan tool on Volkswagen and Audi. You can see I took a screenshot here of this information. Again, that's a really good policy before you do any programming. So we're going to go to advanced version information here in the top left or actually we're going to do, sorry, module information first. 
That's the screen that we saw when we first went to enter into the module. So that's another way you can access this information on Volkswagen and Audi. So we're going to go in there first, capture that, take a screenshot of that information. Then we're going to go to advanced version information. And this is going to give us a little bit more robust data uh, about specifics to the control unit itself. Part number, software, version number, things of that nature. So we'll give it a moment here and it's going to show us. So we can see uh, programming was completed successfully on this particular module previously. Tells us which engine code we've got there, CCTA, the manufacturing date of that module, so 2010. Uh, programming attempts, how often it's been programmed. Uh, and a bunch of other relevant data that's just worth backing up and saving in case we need it for some reason down the road. So there's really no downside to doing this. Really the biggest thing about Volkswagen is backing up your coding. Coding is something where we do have online coding on uh, Volkswagen Audi on our uh, Top Don Professional Series tools. However, we don't have every code for every module on every vehicle on our database. But if you capture the coding from the module before replacing it or before programming it, and you save that data before you go ahead and do any service to the module, then you can reuse that coding on the new or used module you install in most cases, and you will not have to use the online service. Now, the online service is there, and most of the time it will back you up, but in some cases, like I said, we may not have the coding file uh, available, in which case you'll want to have your backed up coding version uh, on the tool saved with a screenshot. So now we're going to go into the programming process. So you can see we're going to build the vehicle here. We're going to go in. We've gone through auto scan. We're going to select Volkswagen. We're going to go into the menu. We're going to go to the scan screen right here. And we're going to click up on online function up in the top right here. So online function is where you can find your programming feature for this vehicle. There is another menu you can get to it through, but we're going to do it this way today. So now we see we've got for online functions, we've got online coding, online parametric configuration, uh, online programming, and online matching and calibration. We're going to do online programming today. And again, remember, we only have programming files for certain modules stored on our servers. We don't have every module for every car. So as much as we'd love to have every file for every car and every module, we do not. Only the manufacturer will have that information. So we're going to go to online programming. The tool is going to download a base file that's identifying the vehicle. Then we're going to click on automatic mode. And then it's going to take us into an identification process. Now this process, we're going to time, time lapse or speed up for you so that we can get to the actual programming process a little bit quicker. So you're going to see it's going to jump from 4 to 100% right away. So these are the files that we do physically have for this particular vehicle. So we see it's a 2011 Passat CC down on the bottom here. Uh, VIN number is shown. And these are the different modules where we do have physical coverage. So we've got the engine control module, the transmission control module, the BCM or J519, which is also known as Central Electronics, uh, the media player, the radio, and the telephone. So those are the modules that we have files available for on the Top Don server for this application. So we're going to click on Engine Electronics, and then it's going to take us into the next screen here. Uh, now we have our original file on the top here, which we can see the part number of, and the software version is 7378. And then we can see the file that we're going to pick here, which is the replacement or upgraded file. And you can see the very last four numbers here, 7506, is actually the software version. We can see it's a higher version number than the original software. Now, we don't know for sure that this is the correct software, so we're going to show you a technical service bulletin that we found using Google search that does affirm it's a newer version. Now, even if it was the same version, we could reflash it with that same software version, and it would work perfectly fine. We do notice that the part number matches, so there should be no problems with this file since the file part number does match. So now we're going to take you to the TSB. The vehicle is going to attempt to download it first, and I'm going to show you what happens occasionally when you try to download a file, sometimes you'll get a network failure message. If the file does not download the first time, go ahead and give it another try. Usually that's just a network error. And that can happen if you're trying to download the file, uh, maybe you don't have a stable network connection. So again, keep in mind a stable network connection is very important to this process. So we're going to try to download it again. 
and when we go to download it again, it will be successful. Now we're also going to show you the TSB that we found that affirms this is in fact an updated file. So we see version 7506 over here highlighted with my mouse. That is the newest version and that was actually a TSB driven release for poor throttle response concerns on the vehicle. So we have that file on our database. So that's the file we're going to flash. Obviously it's improved software for the vehicle and it is going to help the vehicle function better. So now we know that that's a newer file. We can see the part numbers for the software match up. We're going to download the file. It's going to try to re-download it again. This time, the control module is going, or the, uh, excuse me, the Phoenix Smart is going to be successful downloading it on our second try. Now you'll notice it takes a little bit of time. I sped this up, time lapse, so the progress bar would move a little quicker, but the file will download. Once it downloads the file to the tool, then it's going to go into the flashing process. And again, the flashing process, we're going to speed it up for time purposes just so you can see uh, a little bit faster here. So again, now it's going to go into the flashing process and we're going to speed it up. You're going to see the time lapse take place. So we'll see a progress bar that will appear here as it starts to refresh the file and write the file to the control unit. So we'll give it just a moment here as it goes into that process. So now we see the progress bar. So we have the top bar is the overall refresh process. The bottom bar is the refreshing of the sub block, which is just one portion of the memory of the ECM itself. So again, time lapse here. So we'll watch as it goes through and uh, jumps forward quickly. You can see we're at 2% on the top and you'll see it jump rapidly in here in just a moment. Sometimes you'll get a pause like this where the progress bar will disappear. Do not interrupt the tool during the programming process. It's very crucial you let it continue to do its process until it either says it's complete successfully or it gives you an error message that it was not completed successfully. Do not interrupt or disrupt the tool and make sure that your T90000 is connected and plugged in and stable during the whole process. Again, those are very important during the programming process. So we're going to speed this up just a little bit further here so you can see. Okay, so now we're jumping forward. Now we can see it's much closer to being complete. So there we go, we're at 96. We'll speed forward just a little further here. And we're almost at the very end. There we go, there's 100%. So we fast forwarded it here so you could see. Now remember, it's very important that you let it go through the whole process. Do not interrupt it. Uh, it. It can take a very good period of time. Now this particular vehicle without the time lapse took about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, some vehicles may take an hour. Some may take far longer than an hour. But again, we don't want to disrupt the process when it's doing this. Phoenix Smart is going to give us instructions. Uh, most of the time on a lot of vehicles, you're going to have to turn the key off for a period of time before we turn it back on to complete that programming event. So it's going to ask us to do that. So we're going to go ahead and complete the programming event by turning off that key, letting it sit for about 30 seconds. Again, we're going to time lapse this portion of the video just because obviously we don't want to sit here for 30 seconds doing nothing. So you might get an error like this when you do turn the key off. Don't be alarmed by that. Uh, when you turn the key back on, your tool will reconnect, as we can see it did here in this case. Once it's reconnected, we'll give it a moment. Don't touch anything. Let it stop. It's going to ask us to clear the fault memory, which we want to do. It's going to clear the fault memory, and then it's going to give us the message whether it was successful or unsuccessful. It says it was successful. There are no fault codes. And actually, if we rewind just a tiny bit here, we can actually see the version difference. So we can see software version was originally 7378. The new version is 7506. The part numbers match for the, uh, the software. The version of the control unit itself matches. Everything matches except our software version has been updated. So that's what we want to see if there's a new file or if we reused the same file, then we would want to see the same, uh, the same version information down here. But nonetheless, Again, we just want to make sure that it gives us a message it was complete. Anytime I complete a programming event, I like to go through and rescan the whole vehicle to make sure I don't have any codes for coding errors, programming errors, communication errors. You can see our voltage is nice and steady up here at the top at 13.8. 
Uh, it was stabled throughout the entire programming process as we did the programming of the module. We're going to go through and rescan the vehicle. Just make sure we don't have any codes in any other modules saying that something isn't happy. So we'll speed this up a little bit. We'll time lapse for you so you can see. So we get through the whole scan. We do have some faults. We'll go to the screen here with all of the faults at the end to see the report. So we're here on the report. We're going to skip through this. Now we're going to look at the report to see what fault codes we had. So we'll scroll down here and take a look. So here's our report. You can see we have two faults. And as we scroll down, we only have a driver door electronics fault and a radio related fault. The radio related fault is a common fault on most Volkswagen Audi. It has to do with the satellite radio not being activated. And unless the customer has paid for that service, that's a fault you will see in virtually, if not all, Volkswagen vehicles that have a satellite radio antenna, uh, but no service activation. So then the driver's door electronics, uh, this is just because the battery was disconnected at one point in the previous past, and they did not readapt the window after doing so. So we don't have any faults related to coding, programming, all the modules are communicating, everything looks good. So the programming have, event has been successful. We don't have any issues with the vehicle. The vehicle will now power up and start just like it should and drive normally. This has been just a basic overview of the programming process when you are programming a module on a Volkswagen or Audi. Again, keep in mind, we do want to have that stable power supply, the T90,000 connected to the vehicle and make sure that we have it on power supply mode. Usually I will set it to an 80 amp limited current and then set the voltage to about 14 volts as appropriate. 13.8 uh, is acceptable too. And then we want to leave that plugged in and active for the entire programming event. We do not want to disrupt the tool during the process and we want to make sure we have stable internet throughout the entire process. If you do run into questions, you can always call our technical support line here in North America. Uh, otherwise, email Topdon support if you are outside of the US and uh, topdon.com and they will be happy to answer your questions. There are also Facebook support groups for Topdon where there are uh, plenty of agents able to help and assist with questions related to this. So again, I'm Hawken, and I appreciate you watching this video on how to program a module on a Volkswagen or Audi vehicle using the Topdon Phoenix Smart. Thanks again.